Hey everybody, welcome to today's video. Uh, what we're going to look at today is a continuation from the previous video about BSPs. Um, so, there are a few things that I missed out from BSPs and one of them is using the brush editing mode to then edit them and this allows you to be able to create even, even more unique um, shapes you're able to split faces into other sizes so then you can sort of pull them apart and make all sorts of unique and wonderful shapes which if you require them will be perfect so quick example um actually a quick disclaimer obviously if you're watching this video and you've not watched the previous video i obviously i do advise you watch the first video um just to give you um, some insight of what we've already discussed um, If you use BSPs plenty of times before then I'm probably not going to show you anything new um, But you know, it's always worth watching just in case there is something you didn't know because um, I don't always necessarily just cover uh, What the title says in the video I do sometimes often go off on one and sort of Start experimenting with things which um, I'm going to try and keep this one short, so I'm probably not going to do that this uh, as much unless something doesn't go to plan. So let's jump straight into this. So uh, as you've seen in the previous video, um, we can create um, a, a cube and then we can tell it to become hollow and uh, then we can put a, a, a subtract brush or BSP in um, to create a doorway. Um, I've dragged in some staircase BSPs and I've just got a random uh, cone over here. So at the moment, so obviously when we select this, uh, this staircase, um, over here on the right hand side, let me just make that a bit more visible and um, we can you know we can adjust the amount of stirs we can change the step height the length and the width but that that you know apart from using um, other BSPs you know to then uh, let's select subtract apart from being able to use other cubes to subtract and you know even even additions you know if you if we want the staircase to have like uh, a really strange growth on the side of it for absolutely no reason whatsoever um, you know we, we, we know we can do that and we can kind of like combine these two together and, and you know uh, and make them one what if we don't want to do that what if we want to make some really subtle or even really big changes to it which you know it doesn't really make sense just to add another box or a cone or another staircase or something we can edit them. So, for example, here, I've added a staircase and it, it lines up really nicely with the building. Uh, so the staircase comes up, blah, 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 and then it, it ends there. Because like, I've got the staircase to be exactly the same height as the um, as the door frame, because I kind of want to like put, you know, I want to encase the door frame by these stairs. So it feels almost like a tunnel. A small one, yes, but a tunnel nonetheless. Now, I could put a, a box here to fill this gap, but it would be really good if I could just like, just drag this face out a little bit to meet here, so then essentially this top step is a lot longer. But then every, every other step should just remain the same. Now, we can do that. So, to do that, we need to enter the brush editing mode. Now, in UE5, that's just here up at the top. And in UE4, you have a very similar menu um, just over here above the, the, the place actors menu. Um, you know, yours may look a bit more like this. And then across the top, you've got like the actor mode, landscaping, painting, and then you should have brush editing. Uh, I'll put a little picture on the screen now of what that would look like. Uh, and you just want to select the last one, uh, which would be the brush editing menu, which then should give you this funny little panel. Now, often the case is that I think Unreal puts this maybe across the top like this, but I, I personally just chuck it in the menu just at the side so then I know it's open. Because then it doesn't make the, um, the screen a bit 
any smaller. So with this menu open now, you can see that the BSP, the staircase, um, has sort of turned to this translucent um, blue or purple color. And all of the nodes or the vertices and the faces, they all look a bit more clearer now. And what we can do, we can actually select these now and they, they go this, you know, almost orange color. And this means that we can edit them a little bit better. So now what I can actually do is I can actually, you can, if you see, whatever I select, it puts the anchor point in the center of whatever I've selected. So now I can actually grab this face and I can pull it out. Now, at first that looks brilliant, but you may have already noticed there's actually something really wrong with this. Because essentially all I've done is I've just, I've just pulled the face away from the rest of the shape. So it's kind of still attached here, but for whatever reason, Unreal has just decided, you know what, we're going to leave all these not attached, and we're going to leave these here and just stretch this into a funny triangle, and then, yeah, you know what, yeah, that, that, that's a mess. That's a nightmare. Um, if, if, you've, if you've ever done UVing or, you know, sort of like um, texturing, stuff like that, you'll know that's a big problem, because, well, we can see right through the rest of the shape because <laughs> there's there's nothing in this space telling Unreal to render anything. Um, it's just kind of like it's like no man's land. It's just it, it, it's broken. <laughs> so now if we just press Control and Z and let's undo that. Great. This is where we use this toolkit. Although that this that is a feature of the toolkit. We, it didn't do what we wanted it to do. We want to extrude this face outwards um, and we want it to be done correctly. So an extrude moves the geometry forward but it creates new geometry behind it to reinforce the, sh the overall shape that it's meant to be. So what that means is if I drag this forward now to the edge of my door frame what it's gone and done is it has created this new face here to fill in the gap that I, it would have, you know, would have needed to create. And it's done the same on the top. It's it's extended that face, and you know, if we could see, it's done the same on the inside. Brilliant. So now I can do the same on the other side. I can select this face with the extrude selected. I can click and drag, and let's get this to the edge of there. Amazing. Now I've got the start of the tunnel that I wanted. Now, the way I could do this now, um, you know, because this is a prototype, I'm going to keep it really simple. I'm going to go back into actor, so, what is it? Uh, selective editing mode. I'm going to place a cube there. I'm going to drop the Z, Z down to 10. I'm going to push this against the wall. I'm going to drop this down. I'll tell you what, let's press end and get it to be flush. I'm going to drag this over. And amazing, I've got a tunnel. As brilliant as that looks, I've got a tunnel. Oh, and that doesn't even, even line up. So, I've obviously made one of them staircases slightly smaller than the other, but you didn't see that. That's not important for this video. That'll just have to annoy me for the rest of the video, uh, but it's not that important for now. So, you can actually see there slightly where it's created the extra face, and then where it's put this uh, uni this sort of um, pixelated texture, and it's, it looks broken up a little bit. And... Great, that looks exactly how I expect it to, and then functionally, that also works exactly how I expect it to. And now we can get on the roof. Brilliant. Okay, let's have a look at some of these other features. So, if we go back into the brush editing mode, and uh, there are a couple of other options. So, here's just a couple that I like to use, and which I think will be useful. I don't use all of them, because I don't find all of them necessarily useful. Um, but this one I do use quite a bit, uh, not in every case, and I, I don't necessarily use it correctly in, in all cases, but I, I like to use, uh, make unique shapes, and this one helps me. 
So the next one I'm going to show you is triangulate. So triangulate at the moment, you can see this orange selected face is made up of four points. You've got each of the corners, which make up uh, a face surrounded by four edges, um, which if I was to extrude, I'd just have one big square. If I then select triangulate, what you can see happens is it, well, it does exactly what it sounds like. It has triangulated the face. So now this, instead of this being one big square, it's now two triangles which make the square. Now, the reason that I'd use this uh, usually is <laughs> when I want to be really cheeky and make a ramp. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the extrude menu button and I'm going to just pull this out. And as you can see now, I've made myself a really cheeky ramp. Brilliant. So that's all being well. Let's make a, you know, a little extension from here. So then we've actually got a bit of a path to walk around. What I'm going to do I know that I actually want to make this, I want to extrude this out by a length of 200. Is there a way I can do that without, you know, what if I wanted like 201? Um, well, yes. If, you, if you've already seen, there's a setting menu for the extrude and that asks you for a length. If we set that to 201 and press apply, You'll see that now I've got a large chunk that has been extruded from the back of the ramp. And, you know, if I could, I would measure that at 201. Brilliant. I'm going to change that back now to 200 because I'm strange and I won't be able to live with that being 201. That'll drive me insane. But it's also made it in one big chunk. Now, sometimes you might not want to do that. Let's say you want it to be broken up into four. Hit segments four, press apply, and that didn't work how I planned. So the length is going to be 50, but four segments at 50. And now I've got my 200 length by 400. Now, there are other there are use cases why you'd want to do that. Again, for the basic prototyping that I do, I don't often use that. There are cases where it comes in handy, where if you want to select the, um, something like that, and then just change that to ten, and then you go, is that high enough? Is that high enough? Is that high enough? Yeah, that'll do. I would never make a step like that I would never I would never do that because there's it's unnecessary if I know I'm going to be that high I'd rather just do it in one fell swoop and just have that as one segment and just change it to 50 and then have it have it like that or do it incrementally like that um, but the options there if you want to use it you can use it by all means you can use it Let's just continue this around. I want to select all four of them and I want, yeah, let's just do that a couple of times. There you go. I've got another 200, but I've then I've done one increment segments and I've just done that four times. So functionally, that will not make any difference whatsoever. However, with, with there being so many segments, obviously, if you do that for every shape, they're going to add up. That's going to, it's more for Unreal to think about. And, you know, no doubt that will add some cost to performance. Now, <clears throat> there is another feature that I really like. Now, if I do go a little bit crazy with triangulate or if I do, you know, edit something to be extra special and, and I think I've made a bit of a mess of it, what you can do, you can select the entire object and the, here is the optimize button. Now, what it'll do, usually, because this is, let's say, a square face here, or a rectangular face, and it's just made up of these four columns, realistically, there's no reason for that to be made up of four columns. It, it, it could just be one large square face. So we could essentially get rid of these. Um, I, I'm struggling to select the line. There we go. We could essentially get rid of these extra lines. 
you could probably select these faces and see I'm selecting lines in the background so it's not that great here you could select these and you could probably optimize it but uh, essentially if you just click the whole shape where a, a face is not necessarily selected so if I, if I click on the face again it will be selected but if you just sort of like single click on a shape you can hit optimize and it will kind of like go across the whole shape and remove any of the unnecessary bits and pieces so I'm going to press that now and as you can see it's rejiggled my geometry this is now one whole piece there's absolutely no break there this is a solid piece the sides a solid piece the tops a solid piece and it's got rid of all of them unnecessary lines so it, as the name suggests it has optimized the geometry uh, and it's made it a lot nicer for unreal to think about calculate and you know your game to run brilliant there are a couple of other bits and pieces um, let's go back let's go to the cone now and one of the features is the weld feature now if you select two vertices you can essentially weld them together whoa nearly destroyed my mic you can weld them together and it doesn't leave them where they are it actually goes well what's the difference between the two let's let's meet at the middle and then merge them into one so if I press merge now with these two vertices selected hit weld you can see that it's brought them together and it's gone well I'll tell you what we don't need to beat around the bush we can just you've, you've, you've kind of like carved the side off if we do that with this one which is already selected and select this one and weld Oh, you know, we're starting to get a bit of funny action going on here. So maybe that one wasn't selected correctly when I uh, when I did that. So select that. So oh, I know why I jumped too far, didn't I? Let's weld them. Let's weld them, and then let's weld these two. Oh, what have I done? Oh. I'm doing it again. I'm jumping too far. I've selected the line now rather than the vertices. Let's weld these. And because of the amount of sides that were on that um, shape, we've now got a very unusual looking pyramid. Let's just drag that out here a little bit. Yeah, I'm not going to try and equal this up, but there you go. You can see you've got a pyramid. Now, Obviously that example is pretty pointless because you could just place in a cone and tell it, you know what, I want the sides to be four. <laughs> and there you go. That'd be a lot easier way of doing that. So please, please always work smarter than harder. Um, <laughs> don't go around welding things together when you don't need to. Just, just, just sometimes it's easier to do that. And because I'm in brush editing tool, I've now just deleted the entire face. Uh, and this is where things start to get confusing because you start clicking on things and yeah. Yeah, so I think that's pretty much it to be honest. Um, there are a few other ones, you know, there's turn, there's flip. Oh, okay, I'll show you flip, but I, I've literally never used this. So, this face, um, Unreal, is telling this shape that on that face it needs to be visu visual outwards. Um, because nobody's going to be inside the shape so when you do go inside the shape um, if you've ever been on a game and glitched you know that once you're inside uh, an object you can kind of like see through every other object in the map this is exactly the same so at the moment I'm inside the shape and because the shape is not told to render inside and outside because people don't typically go inside objects um, it's only rendering out I'm invisible or the shapes invisible you can select a face and say flip so all faces now are, are told to render outwards apart from this one this one's told to render inside so if we do go inside now that's invisible that's invisible that's invisible but I've just got this one random face which faces the opposite way which obviously disrupts the shadow a little bit but then also ruins the rest of the shape um, I personally have never, never needed to do that. So let's flip that back. 
Um, and I think I've I think I've just messed the whole. Yeah. I don't use that. I've never needed to use that because I just use BSPs for basic stuff. But somebody might come across some issues issues with that. That might help. Um. Oh well, that that's kind of like ruined this as well. Yeah. D don't use flip. Re please read up on it. <laughs> I, I don't use it and obviously don't know how to use it so I'm not going to give you any more information on it because I don't know. Okay, anyway this video is probably long enough as it is so thank you for watching. Please give me a like if you find any of this useful. Please consider subscribing because I might do another follow on video which I then briefly look at the um, UV and getting some colour onto these shapes. Um, yeah, and that's it for the next video. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Thank you.